and Chris Lee still hasn't called a penalty yet. I mean, the whistle hasn't even gone. I mean, you want to lose control of the game, this is how you do it. That's just ridiculous. You got that right. What's going on, guys? Rob Peasel back with another breakdown. And I tried, I swear to you, I tried my best to sit in this chair through all these videos and not join the Twitter mob in complaining about officiating in these players. Even when it became a hot topic, what did I do? I discussed it with PJ Stock, I discussed it with Jackie Redmond, but I didn't give my opinion because quite frankly, I hate complaining about referees. Well, that's all about to change because game four between the Habs and the Golden Knights finally pushed me over the edge. This series has evolved into prison rules. Now let me be very clear here. I'm not trying to write some conspiracy theory about the league influencing the game in any way, shape, or form. All I'm saying is this. This is getting out of control. Penalties aren't being missed. They're just not being called all over the ice. And when that happens, the game gets uglier and uglier. Case in point, Shea Weber and Thomas Nose. It's not so much that one, it's this one. Here, okay, no call on that. Look up, there's nothing there. So we're gonna punch him in the back of the head. Okay, no call there. So now I'm gonna go back at him. There is not an arm up at any point. Still isn't there. And you wonder why the frustration bubbles with players of not knowing exactly what the calls are gonna be. That's a great example why. There was talk about how you guys didn't handle maybe the, the way the refereeing was going. Do you feel that you are handling it better now, even though the crowd is maybe getting ramped up? And uh, how do you see that playing? Yeah, I can't say anything. And just a quick reminder, Perry got that massive scar on his face from a non-call in game three. Players, fans, media, everyone just seems to be really confused, especially after letting so much go this little tug by Nick Suzuki somehow warrants a penalty. Use whatever playoff officiating cliche you want to use. Put the whistles away. Just let them play. Don't decide the game. The problem is, by doing all of those things, they now are deciding the game. Okay, we can't move on from this series until we talk a little bit about the goaltending situation for the Vegas Golden Knights. And what a few days it has been for Mark andre Fleury. He was one of the cons of my favorites going into game three. He was a buck 55 away from winning that game when this happens. Placing as Anderson got a piece of that block, scores! Josh Anderson as Fleury misplaces and the game is tied. And yeah, they would lose the game in OT. And Fleury even had a little fun with the incident at practice. But then head coach Peter DeVore surprised a lot of people, including this guy, when he decided to start Robin Leonard in game four. And Leonard had himself a game, 27 saves in the OT win. So what was his motivation? Aside from, you know, being in the semifinal of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Not many people know, you know, I come to the game four hours early every, I get up my own bus, come four hours early. I sat for two hours and watch you guys talk on Twitter on me, you know, to get me motivated. And, uh, um, you know, it was great. Who gets the start in game five? And before we go, we gotta once again look at this highlight from the Islanders Lightning series. Right in front, McDonough with a chance, spins! Oh, and it's blocked by Pulak! Show it to me one more time. Well, number six, Pulak. What a game-saving play. This was going into the net. That's right, the leading candidate for save of the playoffs belongs to a defenseman. 